Hi students, welcome to your second to last chapter lecture. Um, this will be over chapter 17 and we're going to be covering the evolution of animals with a focus on modern animal diversity. The outcomes for this chapter are as follows. We'll discuss animal origins. We will define what an animal is. I'm going to provide some animal hallmarks. I'll talk about the Cambrian explosion, major branching points, diversity, which will cover uh, many different phyla of invertebrates as well as the chordates, and then we'll focus a little bit more on the chordates, which include the fish, amphibians, reptiles and birds, as well as mammals, including humans. Okay, let's start a little bit with um, animal origins. Animal life began in the Precambrian seas with the evolution of multicellular creatures that ate other organisms. So these were different than existing multicellular creatures that were autotrophic, which means that they could produce their own energy using sunlight or chemicals at deep sea vents. Animals evolved from colonial flagellated protists called coanoflagellates. Remember that protists are eukaryotic organisms that are heterotrophic and they are not plants, animals, or fungi. It's kind of a catch-all category. And this is a depiction of a hypothetical common ancestor of all animals. Um, You'll see that there are several individual cells that make up this hypothetical creature, and they have similarities to modern day sponges, which are technically animals. This illustration is based on fossils found in the Burgess Shale. And the fossils here are trilobites, which are one of the most commonly found fossils. Now, as a precursor to talking about animal diversity, I thought this was a good little infographic to kind of put things in perspective regarding how evolution works. Um, on the left here we see this is not your family tree. You're, you have a great grandfather, a grandfather, and a father, and there's you. It doesn't really work like that, and unfortunately a lot of the common memes and schematics that you'll see um, from groups that are trying to make people believe that evolution is not a fact, you will see basically this linear progression, which has a lot of gaps in it and um, is not actually based on fossil evidence. Okay, evolution did not actually happen this way. It wasn't a linear process with just one branch leading to um, more highly intelligent and more complex organisms. Now this one is a little bit exaggerated, I will say. The fish and salamander make sense. Um, the cat is kind of out of place. Um, more commonly it would be a reptile and then another mammal and then a monkey leading to a person, but either way that's not how evolution works according to all of the best evidence we have. Um, this here shows what your family tree really looks like, and this basic phylogeny shows how evolution actually worked according to our best evidence from phylogenetics, um, biogeography, all sorts of cladistic studies trying to determine which groups are most closely related based on genetic evidence and homologous structures and all sorts of lines of evolution lines of um, evidence of evolution so here's the common ancestor of all vertebrates fishes are fairly primitive they evolved fairly early on we had a common ancestor of four-legged vertebrates that arose eventually, and one of those branches gave rise to amphibians. Here we have a common ancestor of mammals, so the example here would be a cat, but of course there are many, many different branches leading to rodents and marsupials and monotremes and felidae and 
all of the extant groups of mammals, and humans are one tiny branch on that evolutionary tree. So what is an animal? Animals are eukaryotic, they're multicellular, and they're heterotrophic. So they obtain nutrients by ingestion within their bodies. Most animals reproduce sexually, that is, the fertilized egg proceeds through a series of developmental stages after fertilization actually occurs. So we have an adult sea star in this case, its haploid gametes undergo um, meiosis, well, meiosis forms those haploid gametes would be the more correct explanation of that. So those gametes are a sperm and an egg. Fertilization occurs, mitosis is responsible for continued cell division throughout that individual organism's gestational period, as well as processes that occur after birth, such as repair and growth. Um, we have several different stages of immature animals that eventually lead to the adult organism. And of course, some animals undergo what's known as complete metamorphosis, in which their appearance drastically changes between larva and adult. So sea star here is a great example. Um, butterflies and moths and most other insects are another example of animals that have complete metamorphosis. Of course, mammals do not undergo metamorphosis. Um, we are born and we basically look very similar to what we will as adults. We just go through this slow process of um, growth and sexual maturation. Most animals have muscle cells for movement, as well as nerve cells that control muscles. Complex animals are able to use their muscular and nervous systems for many functions other than consuming food. And some animals have concentrated networks of nerve cells that make up a brain. At the beginning of the Cambrian period, 542 million years ago, animals underwent a rapid diversification. So remember, if you see um, a name of an era or a time in history followed by the word explosion, they're usually referring to a rapid diversification or an adaptive radiation of life forms. They're not referring to an asteroid hitting the Earth or any catastrophic explosive event like that. So in the sense of the Cambrian explosion, the pre-Cambrian times, there were very few distinct species, and this Cambrian period of time basically led to a rapid diversification of all sorts of different evolutionary lines. So anything from protozoa to annelids, mollusks, echinoderms, fishes, amphibians, etc. All of these taxa arose out of this Cambrian explosion. There are three key evolutionary branch points that have been hypothesized in animal evolution. The first was the advent or evolution of true tissues. The second is the evolution of body symmetry and the third is the advent of a body cavity. So as you can see here, sponges, which are very primitive animals, do not have true tissues, but all other branches of animals have tissues. So this common ancestor here had true tissues and it led to all these other branches. Cnidarians are the only animals with radial symmetry and the rest have bilateral symmetry and I will explain each of these evolutionary branch points in more detail. So the first branch point is defined by the presence of true tissues. Sponges lack true tissues, which are groups of cells that perform specialized functions. So sponges do not have tissues that are organized into specialized um, functional capabilities. So they don't have organ systems or anything that we usually think of when we are talking about um, 
animal complexity. The second major evolutionary split is based on body symmetry. Most animals have bilateral symmetry, meaning if you were to place an invisible plane down the midline of that animal's body, it would roughly separate that animal into two equal halves. With radial symmetry, it's more of a round body plan, so you would have to make two planes in order to have roughly equal sections. The third branch point is the advent of a body cavity. So a coelom is another word for body cavity, and it is defined as a fluid-filled space that separates the digestive tract from the outer body wall. Animals may have a true coelom, a pseudo coelom, or no coelom, in which case they are known as a coelomate. So flatworms here are a coelomates. They do not have a body cavity. We have this digestive tract shown in yellow, a tissue filled region that forms the mesoderm, and then the body covering which forms the ectoderm. With pseudocoelomates, such as a roundworm, we have a digestive tract, a pseudocoelom, a muscle layer that's derived from the mesoderm, and then the outer body covering. Animals with a true coelom, they have their digestive tract lined with this tissue layer that arises from mesoderm. It completely lines the coelom. So this is the hallmark of a true coelomate. You have this digestive tract that actually is completely surrounded by tissue that arises from the mesoderm. And then of course we have the body covering. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to the major invertebrate phyla. Remember, phyla refers to one of the hierarchical groupings that we use to classify organisms. So kingdom would be animalia, phylum is the more specific hierarchical classification that follows kingdom, so all of these names on the following slides will refer to phylum names. And it's interesting to note that 95% of the animal kingdom are invertebrates, which means that they lack backbones. Okay, sponges belong to the phylum Porifera. They're the most primitive animals. They are descendants of coanoflagellates. They lack true tissues and symmetry. And they draw water into a central cavity where food is collected. So these are sessile or um, sedentary marine animals. Here we have a schematic that shows basically what a sponge looks like in detail. We have a coanoflagellate here, which is a feeding cell in contact with an amoebocyte, which picks up food from the coanocyte. We have little channels here that draw water and other um, particulates like food items in. This space would be known as the central cavity. And we also have flagella on these coanocytes. Phylum cnidaria are perhaps most commonly represented by the jellies, or the um, they're commonly called jellyfish, but they're not actually fish. So they're in this phylum cnidaria. These animals represent the first animals to evolve with true tissue layers, so they have two layers of tissues. They have radial symmetry, and they have cnidocytes, which are stinging cells. Notice that cnidaria and cnidocytes are very similar. The phylum was actually named for the stinging cells. And in addition to jellies, there are hydra, corals, and anemones. Note that there are two body forms that are common in this phylum. There are 
the Medusa 